Welcome to Scale Model Workshop. In this episode, I want to talk about dental acrylic, sometimes referred to as dental acrylic resin. If you've seen some of my other videos or web page articles, you've no doubt seen me using it. So let's take a closer look at dental acrylic for scale modeling. Today, there are a myriad of acrylics and resin products used in dentistry. But what I find most useful for model construction is one specific type known as cold cure or denture repair acrylic. Cold cure acrylic is made up of an acrylic powder and a methyl methacrylate monomer. The monomer smells similar to Weld On Number 3, and it has many of the same solvent characteristics, which can sometimes be a positive or a negative for scale modeling. When the powder and liquid monomer are mixed together in a more fluid mix, it can be used for casting, but the castings generally have a rougher texture than with a good casting resin. However, when polished, I sometimes use it for a form for vacuforming clear parts. Adding more powder will obviously thicken the mix, and as it stiffens a bit, you can ball it up and use it like putty. The powder and liquid can also be combined in what's typically referred to as a salt and pepper technique of alternating liquid and powder. This is useful if you want to reinforce a joint and take advantage of the solvent effect. While the acrylic will get hard on its own, it's really designed to be cured in warm water and preferably under pressure for maximum density and hardness. The problem with using this acrylic mixture as a filler is that the solvent activity will soften the styrene under and around the dental acrylic and make it impossible to smoothly sand and feather it out. What I started doing many years ago to eliminate the solvent was to combine the acrylic powder with Zappagap cyanoacrylate. I tried the different acrylic powders that I had on hand. Some of them were too grainy, and some wouldn't even let the mixture get hard. The one that I found worked best was Free Flow Powder from Denseply. Because it's so fine, it combines extremely well with cyanoacrylate, making a nice consistent material that sands out smoothly. Free flow powder by itself doesn't work with monomer as I described earlier. It's meant to be added in small amounts to the normal acrylic monomer mix to enhance the flow. So don't expect to use it for both purposes. I only use it with the cyanoacrylate. An amount of Zappagap is placed on a piece of stiff paper. The free flow is salted in while constantly stirring the mixture. The more acrylic you add, the thicker the mix and the faster it'll set. In short order, you can easily get a feel for what thickness works best for your application. For a thicker mixture where you want plenty of working time, I like using slow zap instead of zapagap. This technique won't work with thin zap CA because you won't have enough time to incorporate the powder. And I can't comment if any other cyanoacrylate cements will work because I only use zap products. The mixture sets evenly, so if it feels set on the outside, it'll be set all the way through. Since it's a non-solvent filler, as soon as the mixture is hard, you can finish it down without any worry of shrinkage or underlying softened plastic. I use this mixture for everything, from reinforcing joints to backfilling details that I want to remove. For example, the radiator door on this Academy P38 was backfilled with this mix. Various seams were filled with a thinner mix, which not only fills, but reinforces the joints. This is a real plus because there's quite a bit of flex between the major components of this model's airframe. Out of the box, the nose of this Tamiya M48 hull is far too rounded. Auto body striping tapes used to isolate the area where the material will be added. A mixture of Zappagap and free flow is applied to the nose of the hull. Within minutes, the mixture is set. The tape's removed and the area given a final contouring. The entire process to primer took only about 20 minutes. One of my favorite techniques for improving the contour and fit around two components is to use bare metal foil as a separator. Here I want to improve the way the fuselage meets up with the lower turret on the monogram A26. The lower turret's covered with bare metal foil and taped to place with double-sided sticky tape. A mixture of Zappagap and acrylic is flowed into the space between the fuselage and the turret. When set, the turret's removed and the area recontoured. Because the Zappagap sticks nicely to most anything, 
This mixture works out well for use on metals. Reworking this 1 18th diecast Lola T70, I used the same bare metal foil technique to add some material to the door and improve the fit between the door and the rear bodywork. Here I've used it to fill the gaps in the pieces that make up the tail and nose, along with fixing a piece of brass tubing in place to clean up the cast representation of the opening underneath the headlight. The tremendous adhesive quality of this mixture makes it ideal for combining dissimilar materials. Here I've used it to affix tubing to the underside of the first level of a 1 350th battleship so that the deck remains straight and resists warping. I cast gun blisters for this 30 second Hawker Tempest with the same mixture of dental acrylic and Zappa Gap. I needed each blister to have a precise locating pin and the adhesive quality of the Zappa Gap mixture ensured that the metal pin was solid while the blisters were finished down and put into place. The clear acrylic used to make orthodontic appliances is also useful as a clear filler. I found this mixture to be useful when working with clear parts. Here I used it to correct the rounded corners on the windscreen of a vacuform tempest canopy. The flat surfaces were first sanded to highlight the curved corners. A mixture of orthodontic acrylic powder and Zappa Gap was applied to the corners, and the excess was finished down. Using the bare metal foil technique, I added some of the clear mixture around the base of the canopy to develop the characteristic flare. So by now it's easy to see how this material has become a mainstay for me. In combination with Zappa Gap or Slow Zap, it's the ultimate filler, and by far and away better than adding micro balloons, baking soda, or talcum powder, all of which I've tried. I guarantee anyone who says it's the same has never used the free flow Zappa Gap combination. I have no idea about using other combinations of different acrylics or cyanoacrylate cements other than the dental acrylics that I've tried, and none of them work like the free flow powder. Now the bugger is that dental acrylics aren't readily available to the public, but if you're resourceful and persistent, you'll more than likely be able to lay your hands on some, whether through an online source a friend who's a dental technician, a dentist, or a dental assistant, or maybe along with a fellow modeler who's connected. You could easily split one of these and have a lifetime supply. Although once you get a feel for the material, you might find yourself using it more and more. I've put the actual Dentsply product number below in the description of this video.